Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about understanding arrays in detail. We have been talking about arrays throughout this course of Java in the previous sessions as well and we have covered some basic understanding of how to create arrays, how to declare them, how to fill values in the array and how do we print the array with positions as well as the array as whole. But whatever examples which we took previously were one dimensional arrays because arrays can have more than one dimensions as well. You can create a one dimensional array. You can create a two dimensional array. You can create even a three dimensional array and you can go up to as many dimensions as you can handle in your Java program. So it depends upon the kind of complexity you want to have in your program and the kind of values, the kind of structure you are going to store in your arrays. And based on that need, you can choose whether you want to use a 1D array or one dimensional array or a 2D array or a 3D array and so on. In these sessions, we are going to talk about 1D arrays, 2D arrays and 3D arrays. And after that, we'll leave up to you to try out more dimensionals if you want to. We have already covered the basic array structures, which were one dimensional arrays. So I will just give you a quick walkthrough of how we actually handled one dimensional arrays. So this is a sample program to demonstrate one dimensional arrays. If you remember, this is how we used to create arrays. We write the data type of the array and then we write the square boxes which denote that this is an integer array data type. We assign a variable to this and then we initialize the array with the size four. So new is the keyword which is used to initialize anything in Java and we are going to use this heavily when we talk about classes and objects and even collections, literally any object which you want to create in Java requires a new keyword. So here I'm writing new and then int four, which means create an array of size four. And then I'm filling the value of the four positions, which I have created as part of this array. And if you remember when we create these kind of arrays, we store them in a zero index based position. The first value gets stored at 0th index position and then so on and so forth. So it will always start from 0 and never start from 1. Remember that. And after that, we just print all the values of individual positions of the elements in the array. And if I just run this program, all of the elements of this particular array should be printed one by one. So if I just show the full console of the output, we can see that element and index 0 was 10, element and index 1 was 20 element at index 2 was 30 and element at index 3 was 40. So this was just a quick refresher of how one dimensional arrays can be written. And whenever you declare a very simplistic array, it will generally be a one dimensional array. Now let's look at the two dimensional arrays and how do we write them? When do we need them? For that, I have created another example, which is says two dimensional array. I just created a class and it has a public static void main method and I've created a two dimensional array this time. So let's understand this two dimensional array in a bit detail. And when do we need that? Generally, you would need to use two dimensional arrays whenever you are trying to do any matrix calculations. If you if you understand what do we mean by matrix, it's basically a two by two structure which stores the values in the form of rows and columns. So imagine a table of two rows and two columns, then it will be a two by two matrix. So if you want to store that particular table in a Java program, you would need to store that as a matrix, as a two dimensional matrix, rows being the one dimensional and column being the other dimension. And that's what we are doing here. And if you want to store that 2D matrix in a Java program, the approach and the procedure for it is pretty similar to how you create a one dimensional array with slight changes. The first change is instead of a single square bracket, you're going to write two square brackets because it is a two dimensional array. So remember the number of square brackets you are going to put while initializing and declaring the array is the number of dimensions which your array is going to have. Since this is a two dimensional array example, that's why you see two brackets here. If this was a three dimensional array example, you will see three, array, three square brackets here and so on and so forth. So that's the first part of it. Second part, to understand is to how to store the data. Remember I told you always imagine the structure of rows and columns whenever you are trying to store a two dimensional array in Java. 
So what are rows and what are values and how do you represent them while you declare and initialize a two dimensional array? So you start with the curly braces as a normal 1D array, but inside the curly braces, you create nested curly braces blocks. We can see three blocks here. They start with their own curly brace and end with their own. Then this curly brace starts here and ends here. And then this curly brace starts here and ends here. Idea is that you provide this outer curly braces to define the overall structure. And then inside each of the curly braces is going to represent a row in your two dimensional array. So each of these values, these blocks is going to represent a row. So I can say that this is the first row. This is the second row and this is the third row. And if I try to visualize it in terms of columns, then this is the first row, first column, first row, second column, first row, third column. Similarly, second row, first column, second row, second column, second row, third column, and third row, first column, third row, second column, and third row, third column. So individual values are going to be represented as columns and the whole curly braces is going to be represented as arrays. That's the basic mental idea or mental image you should have while declaring a two dimensional arrays. Remember to declare the rows inside the nested curly braces and whatever elements you have will automatically be indexed as columns. One other thing to remember that since this is an array data structure, everything starts from zero and nothing starts from one. So this will be row zero, this will be row one, and this will be row two. I'm talking about the position. We can still call it as first row, second row, and third row, but the position of this particular row element is zero. The position of this particular row element is one, and this particular row element is two. Similarly for column as well, this is column zero, column one, and column two. Similarly, column zero, column one, and column two, and so on and so forth. Once you understand this data structure well and you have defined it correctly, then everything should fall in place. If you want to do a matrix addition or if you want to do a matrix multiplication or a dot product, all of the kind of calculations can be performed using the 2D array concept. Here in this program, what I'm doing is I am printing the values of this particular 2D array into a matrix style. And you see some strange code here, which is for, etc. Don't worry about this. I'm going to cover in detail what this for means and how do you write this. For now, what we can understand that we just want to print this. You might not need to print this in your Java programs when you write a production grid application, but you might want to do manipulations on these uh, arrays as metrics. Maybe you want to create a transpose of a matrix or you want to do a dot product or addition or subtraction or whatever be your use case. In this case, just for demonstration purpose, I'm printing the values as rows and columns, nothing else. So this all of this code from line eight to line 14, or in fact, line 13, is just showing how to print the values. You can see some system.out, and you can see some construct here. And like I said, don't worry about this. I will cover this in detail. Let's run this program and see if my Java array is stored correctly and how can I represent this. So you can see I have represented it in a style of a 2D matrix where this is the first row, this is the second row, and this is the third row. Similarly, this is the first column containing the value 237. So column zero will have value two, and uh, column one will have this value three, and column two will have this value seven for row zero. Let me also do something here which can help you understand this concept better. Let me do a system.out.println, and let's print an individual value. Because like I said, the for loop can be confusing here to understand. So let's say I want to print ARR of zeroth row first column and see what kind of values do we get. Let me comment this code. Comment is control backslash and this code will be commented and this code will not be executed. And now only line 15 will be executed instead of the four block. So if I run this, I get the value seven. So row zero and first column. Row zero, first column is seven. Let's try with one one. I want to print the row at one position. Remember not the first row, but the one position row, which is basically technically the second row. So second row, second column, and see what kind of values value do I get in this case? I get six, so second row, second column. Similarly, if you change this value to two, then third row, second column. 
which should point to four. Yes, we get four. Similarly, you can write a value here as zero and you can write a value here as let's say two. This will print the zeroth row and the second column. So similarly, whatever kind of value you want to write you or you want to access, you can access it in this fashion. And remember the column and row indexes will always start from zero. So this is a simple demonstration of how you can use two dimensional arrays. And in this session, we also did a refresher of one dimensional arrays. So that's all for this session. And in the next session, we are going to be discussing how we can define three dimensional arrays and we'll also see an example of it. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code Programming channel for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next lecture.